Good morning, everyone. We're going to wait a few minutes so that everyone can come in out of the waiting room and we'll get started with our webinar. Okay, good morning. We want to be respectful of everyone's time, so we want to get started. My name is Aisha Driggers. I'm with the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities. Thank you for joining us for the Financial Fitness Tips and Strategies for Small Business Series. This is the third of a three-part series. Um, I encourage anyone who missed the other two to please, um, you can look on Facebook and watch the live stream of the event. I can also share the YouTube link if anyone has any interest of looking back at those videos. They've been great, very informative. Um, we've really enjoyed offering this session for the group and we look forward to providing additional resources for our small businesses in the community. I wanna start by just giving a brief overview of the Office of Business Opportunities for those of you who are not familiar with our office. We offer commercial lending, which is financial assistance to start up and existing businesses for growth, expansion, retention, and the creation of new jobs. We also offer assistance in the redevelopment of commercial corridors. Brett Whiting is our loan officer. He is on the call and he'd be happy to um, answer any questions related to commercial lending if anyone needs to contact our office for that. Next, we have our contractor and supplier diversity area which offers training and support for city initiatives that are designed to increase local contractors' capacity to compete for government contracts and other procurement opportunities. Some of our program areas are subcontractor outreach, mentor protege, local business enterprise preference policy, and the Columbia Disadvantaged Business Enterprise. In that area, we have Juliet Nelly, Latanya Germany, and also Kalina Ginyard. Lastly, we have our technical assistance education and advocacy, where we offer business development assistance and courses for startups and existing businesses that are looking to grow and expand. Some of the topics we cover include marketing, the use of social media, business plan development, finances, legal issues, and more. If you have any questions about the trainings we offer, feel free to give me a call or um, you can email me as well. We can talk about some different opportunities for us to assist with technical assistance. Also on our call in our office that support all of our areas are Tanya Porter DeBerry, Shandria Robinson, and Carla Eichelberger. Um, so we want to go over our upcoming webinars. Our next webinar is next Tuesday. We're offering a profit first session with Stephen Hughes. He's the executive director of No Money Inc. For anyone that has registered for um, these webinars, I will send you a follow-up survey along with the link to register for this upcoming webinar next week. Here's our contact information if you have any questions about how we can assist your office. Also, if you offer a so good or service, we would love to make sure that you are registered with our EBIT system. So you can give us a call at 803-545-3950 or email us at obo at columbiasc.gov. Now I want to turn it over to one of our partners, Ms. Cheryl Sally, to go over the Benedict College Women's Business Center. Cheryl? Good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you so much, Aisha. My name is Cheryl Sally, 
and I serve as the director for the Benedict College Women's Business Center. I want to thank you to the City of Columbia for having this great, great um, event, uh, all of the information. Um, we are a newly, I still say a newly funded center. We launched uh, officially last September, uh, coming up on a year. Um, but we are funded by the Small Business Administration, who you will hear from shortly. Um, a little bit of what our mission is, our purpose, our vision, uh, primarily is to be a gateway or to create a gateway out of poverty for our socially and economically disadvantaged women entrepreneurs. And we do that pro by providing the one-on-one -on -one counseling, uh, programming, giving the information, the education, and the tools for individuals um, to start their business or to grow their business. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, um, we want to see, we want to stimulate this economy, but we want to see and help individuals leave a legacy for their families and in this community. What we do, some of the services we provide is business planning and development helping individuals to write that vision, you know, write that vision where you are today, where do you want to be five months from now, five years from now, 20 years from now, you know, and, and knowing what the steps are to get there. Um, so writing that plan out and the, the misnomer is that individuals come all the time and say, yeah, I don't really need a plan because I'm I'm not going to a lender to borrow money, but the plan is not for a lender always. Yes, lenders do want to see what your plan is and they want to see it in writing, but the plan is for you. It is for you internally um, to, and look at it, you know, year to year, uh, am I on point with where I plan on being? So we help with the business planning, resiliency and disaster recovery planning, financial management, um, helping to fill out all type of applications from business licensing to uh, applying for the loan or government contracting and certification packages, so on and so forth. And all of the one-on-one -on -one counseling we do is at no cost. And just like the women business centers, we have three in South Carolina, small business development centers, SCORE and an array of other business development resource partners in this area is at no cost. And it's a wealth of knowledge here, right here in South Carolina. Um, we don't know everything, but we have enough, a large enough network to help you, uh, guide you to where you need to go to get the information that you need. Um, we assist our focus is on women entrepreneurs, particularly women of color, but I always have to put this out there that we help uh, everyone regardless of your race or gender. Uh, we do focus on for-profit uh, entities uh, versus nonprofits. Uh, and we have, I just wanna say, uh, acknowledge our administrative coordinator. I think she's on the line, Latoya Lindsay. She helps keep us together here and she, she helps our clients uh, providing optimal and great customer service. But we do, um, we partner with the other resource providers in the area uh, in South Carolina and nationwide. Um, and it is, um, just to share with you our slogan, it is our pledge to work side by side with the women entrepreneurs and local businesses to retain and build industry and commerce, create jobs and improve economic opportunities for all communities. So please, please um, connect with us. You have our contact information on the screen. Uh, we want to make sure that you have the tools that you understand business you understand business management, how to develop, and the systems, the infrastructure. And I always say that, Mr. Smith, I've been taking some good notes. He is, he has been providing great information about one of the major systems in every business, whether it's for-profit, non-profit, civic, church, faith-based, the financial system, and all about finances and financial, you know, financial management. But he's touched a lot on that. So take ownership of the information. Use the information um, that we share all the time, every day, all day. So I'm gonna stop right here so we can get on to some great information. I have my pen and paper ready. Thank you, City of Columbia. Thank 
to the partners and thank everybody for being here. Thank you, Sure. We always love your passion to provide assistance and resources to our small business community. So thank you for your partnership. Now I will go to Ms. Angela Brewer with the Small Business Administration. Thank you so much, Aisha. Thank you all for having me. As she stated, my name is Angela Brewer. I'm a business opportunity specialist with the um, South Carolina District Office of Small Business Administration. SBA, we're based, our foundation is start, grow, expand, and recover. When we say start, we don't, here at SBA, we don't ourselves do the counseling process, but we have, we get grant you access to counseling. We have the Women's Business Center, which Cheryl Sally and her great team. We have another Women's Business Center in Charleston, and we have one in the upstate. We have SBDCs that's located throughout the state, and we also have SCORE. So when you're trying to start a small business, we will probably don't get upset when we send you to our resource partners because that's why we provide assistance, provide the monetary assistance so they can help you um, start your process. And then when we talk about grow, we have a lending program. We, we don't have, again, we don't lend money, but we have access to lenders that lend on behalf of SBA. SBA backs 75 to 80% of that loan. We have four loan programs. We have the SBA micro loan, which is $50,000 or less. Then we have the SBA express loan, which is $350,000 or less. Then we have the 504 and the 7A loan, which is 5 million, 10 million respectively or less. And then we grow. That's my side of the house. I may expand. If you have a business that has been running, operating for a while now, and you say, okay, I'm at a standstill. What can I do next? You want to reach out to Angela or Carl or Stephanie, and we can help you expand your business through federal contracting. We have four preferential programs. We have the 8A program, which is for social and economic disadvantaged business owners. We have a woman-owned small business program, which is self-explanatory. We have the hub zone program, which is historically underutilized business zone. And then we have the services and veteran program, which you have to be um, considered disabled by the VA with a 0% to 100% rating. And then lastly, we have the recovery phase. Like right now, we are still trying to recover from this pandemic. Oh God, I hate talking about it. But this pandemic that has somewhat crippled the United States, well, the whole world, we assist in recovery. We at SBA only a, a pay, well, have money when it comes to the recovery phase. We lend money through our disaster team not the SBA district office, although we get all the calls, it still goes to disaster. We can look, if you have your EIDL loan or the PPP, we can look it up, but we cannot do anything as far as the loan packet go, but we can look up your, your EIDL number or your, your um, PPP loan number, and we can tell you what's going on with it, but we cannot do anything like upload documents or refresh re, um, your link or anything like that, but we can look at the information and let you know what's going on. So if you if you need any assistance for S, from SBA, please reach out to us. We're here, well, we're at home, but we are here man between eight and 5.30 every day and we'll be more than happy to help you. Thank you again, Aisha. Thank you, Angela. And Paul mentioned early in this series about the um, ecosystem that we have and all of these ladies are such a wonderful part of our ecosystem. We work so well together so that we can provide the appropriate resources to our small business community. So thank you, Angela and Cheryl, for your partnership. Kalina Ginyard is, go, is monitoring our chat. She has already added some information in there. We, as a reminder, please keep your microphone on mute so we can clearly hear the presentation. There will be an opportunity if you have any questions to um, type those in the chat or we can ask those questions later when we get to a Q&A portion of the presentation. Um, just to kind of go over what we've already discussed or what Paul has already discussed, last Tuesday he went over the six C's of credit and the importance of establishing a banking relationship. And so I would encourage anyone, again, if you missed that webinar, just please contact our office and we can provide you with the recording of that link. And then on Thursday, or that was last Thursday, and then this past Tuesday we went over cash flow projections and the simplified business plan. And we found out a lot of information on the difference between cash flow and profitability, as well as um, what you need to include in your business plan. 
So now we're going to go over um, the emphasis of an entrepreneurial mindset, including management, innovation, creativity, and profit maximization. This was titled Skills to Pay the Bills. So we're looking forward to having this conversation. Now I want to introduce our presenter, Mr. Paul Smith. He's the CEO of Best Carolina LLC, and he serves as lead instructor for the South Carolina Community Loan Funds Local Entrepreneur Accelerator Program. Paul is a certified next level facilitator specializing in business startups, existing businesses who wish to grow, micro enterprises, and specialty training in agriculture-based ventures. Also going green, signage, and money management. Additionally, Paul is a certified fast track new venture trainer with the Kaufman Foundation. He's been a college instructor since 2004, teaching all aspects of business curriculum. He's received his BS double major in finance and risk manage it, management from the University of South Carolina and an MBA in business from Webster University. You can take it over, Paul. Okay, and thank you again, Aisha and the uh, City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities. This is the third installment and uh, we're gonna do some skills to pay the bills. I'm hoping today that the chat room will be filled with responses and or questions. Uh, and certainly I will provide, you have my contact information right in front of you as we move forward. Okay, we have about 35 minutes. Let's, let's move forward with this. Skills to pay the bills. I've uh, labored uh, around this topic and I just wanted to keep things simple, the KISS method and have five. And they're probably about 30 to 40, depending on who's uh, presenting the material. But I want to keep things in a simplistic form. And it is that simplistic, pretty much following. And that's the key, the following. Uh, Aisha alluded to the fact that this learning ecosystem, and I've mentioned within a 10 mile radius, ladies and gentlemen, you have the subject matter experts, all of which all of which operate from the mind, uh, the, the, the mindset of a teacher. Okay, so here are the five key skill areas. Communication and negotiate, okay? And then you see I've kind of lumped them together so you can, uh, enthusiasm and attitude, networking, uh, teamwork, critical thinking slash problem solving, and professionalism and or social media. So that's my intent. And again, the chat room, I'll probably hit time and time again. And thank you, Kalina, for monitoring the chat room as we move forward. Okay, let's go into communication and negotiating. And just to kind of put this in context, I have challenges that I have heard as a business coach and an advisor and some strategies I've reached out to my clients and just in general audiences, my uh, students as well. Challenge, elevator pitch anxiety, the elevator pitch. You've heard it time and time again. Some have said an elevator pitch should last 30 seconds, some say two minutes. Time permitting today, ladies and gentlemen, I will show you the pitch that one to $30,000 with the uh, South Carolina Community Loan Fund. As you notice, um, I will mention the Women's Business Center. Thank you, Cheryl. That'll be coming up right here. Matter of fact, one of the bullet points here, Cheryl, all of these, and we share, we share. We're not in competition. It's all about the success, okay? But elevator pitch anxiety, in essence, it is said that the elevator pitch, once you're on an elevator with a mover or a shaker or a person of influence, you have the time uh, from which the elevator goes from the second to the fifth floor to, uh, to reach them and how it benefits uh, them from that standpoint, the pitch. And here are some strategies. I would say before you uh, develop your elevator pitch, just come out of your comfort zone. And this could be having three by five cards. I have utilized that, okay? Uh, also Toastmasters, again, pre-COVID, uh, there were several chapters, some are uh, meeting virtually. You've never heard of Toastmasters. I will put a link later in, uh, in the segment on Toastmasters. And there again, that's something where you can be among those who do this for a living, okay? So again, always smile. That smile while talking uh, is, is beneficial. I've heard time and time again, and I showed you, I believe the first session, a young lady, Tamika, who said, I'm quiet and introverted. I hate to talk to people, okay? But again, for that time frame, given the technology, she was able to come out of that shell and uh, be the recipient of seed monies in the form of $5,000, okay? Uh, I've embedded a link, and to uh, Aisha's point, these slides will be available to you. A link to Chris Voss. He's a former FBI negotiator, and he did a TED Talk, and the TED Talk says, never split the difference. I find a lot of small business owners, 
and I have one in my family tree uh, in North Charleston. He is in the lawn care industry, the lawn care industry. And you can certainly uh, respond in the chat room. And I've heard him say on numerous occasions, because that's just the way I am. And the way he is, is whenever he does someone's yard, okay, he will say, you know, it is, if the person is older, he will say, well, I'll take whatever you give me. I'll take whatever you'll give me. Someone just responded in the chat room. What's problematic with that? Okay. He's a sole proprietor, not an LLC. And he gets a lot of calls. That has me in a, in a, in a fit of anxiety. I said, because here's why they're calling you all the time. Because the word has gotten out. Wow. Yeah, he will take whatever you'll give me. So again, so never split the difference. Uh, and then that term, and he'll break this down how he was able to get folks to confess or to uh, surrender, but never split the difference. And I do not know what the numbers mean. Okay. Uh, we got a comment in the chat from Ashley <laughs> Coleman. Hey, Ashley. Um, they can pay what they want to give him. Yes. Yes. Not what you're worth. Not what you're worth. Thank you, Ashley. And here's some strategies. Uh, BATNA, these acronyms, I've given you CDFI, uh, Community uh, Development Financial Institution, the best alternative to a negotiated agreement. That's a strategy, okay? The goal of negotiation is to create a win-win situation, a new situation. And you see, again, I'm alluding to Cheryl uh, and her group at the Women's Business Center. So again, that communication and negotiating set up a time where you can meet with one of the staff members there to go through this. And that could also be the city of Columbia. Again, I shared with you with Community Works, I'm there on Laurel Street. Uh, normally I'd like to be virtually, but get communication negotiating, okay? Uh, also, thank you, Ashley. On negotiating, there are some styles. In the chat room, okay, here are the styles. Again, this is textbook, soft negotiators. They avoid conflict at any cost, no drama. No drama, no drama, no drama. Hard negotiators. And then there's the win-win. In the chat, this kind of, again, this is the last, last session in a series of three. Just give me your preferences, okay? Soft, hard, or win-win, okay? And I'll continue to go through this in the essence of time. But here, soft says, usually don't stand up for their best interest. That's a dollar amount associated, okay? Hard negotiators may use threats or bluffs. And if that's your preference, <laughs> if you want to admit it in this public sphere, do so, but the win-win. So in the chat, let's continue to go through this. And again, and thank you, uh, Kalina, for just chiming in. And we'll take, get like a, a poll, a, 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 an informal poll on of the three styles, what your preferences are, okay? Got, and knowing got that- two, We got two right now that say win-win. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'll be quiet. Okay. okay. I, I, and I, I'm doubting today that someone will automatically say I'm a hard negotiator on paper, but I, 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 I get that. I get that. Good deal. Good deal. And right, here's some traits. They understand their counterparts' interests and perspectives. As you're formulating your elevator pitch, go with that in mind. How does it benefit them? Okay. We talked about BATNA, the best alternative to a negotiated agreement. And here's what's important. Know when to walk away from negotiations. It's not win at all costs. No. Okay. So again, traits of effective negotiators, and it goes back to never split the difference. And that's a clear understanding. All right. That's one of the skills. Secondly, enthusiasm and attitude. If you've never watched this movie, you see upper right hand corner. One of my favorites is called The Pursuit of Happiness. True story, uh, portrayed by Will Smith, and you can see his son there. That's a bathroom scene, a homeless scene, actually, in the movie, okay? So in this walk called entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial mindset, there will be some times where you're all alone, financially and literally, literally, okay? And I like the fact that this movie was made for television, and I'm gonna give you some of the challenges there. The customers, and or contracts are few and far between. Understanding the actual, uh, the framework, ladies and gentlemen, or the foundation is based on this COVID environment. COVID-19, there are vaccines, but now there's a Delta variant. 
you will have in your businesses a variant. Paul, I did everything right, but now there's a variant. Okay. And with this attitude, I would submit it says, challenge, I have so called friends. I've heard entrepreneurs say that so called friends or fair weather friends. And here are three, three key questions here Who do I need to know? Where do I need to be? And what do I need to start doing? And I'm glad you asked this because I'm going to provide some solutions. Here's strategy positive mental attitude, thinking outside of the box. And on these so-called friends, I'm going to go to the late and bless her. May she rest in peace, Maya Angelo, in a second. And then here, I'm giving you resources. I don't mind sharing resources because you know, no one, no, no man or woman is an island unto themselves. We look at sources and someone has already been there, done that. Ken Coleman has what's called the proximity principle. And he said there were three main P's in the proximity principle, a, a book I highly re recommend. He said the right people the right places, okay, look at this, and the right practices. Thanks to the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, they sponsor Next Level. They sponsor Fast Track. Later, I will go to their Instagram. Again, if you, if, so, if none of you have never been on their Instagram page, it is the who's who. Who, where, what, all of the above. I think Aisha mentioned that, and, and she was very, uh, and she provided a summary but it's much more in depth. You have this with the city of office business, of business opportunities. All right, so as we're going through this enthusiasm and attitude, here's what Maya had to say, Dr. Maya. When someone shows you about these friends or these so-called friends, who they are, Dr. Maya says, believe them the first time. Believe them the first time. Because people know themselves much better than you do. That's why it's important to stop expecting them to be something other than who they are. They're going to be some members of your family. I have them that do not support entrepreneurship. I'll just work a nine to five or question, why are you leaving this industry to pursue a dream? Okay. When they're showing you that, love them. Love them. That's your family member or friend. But just know there are limitations. There are limitations there. OK, now here I'm going to go back quickly. I said, where do what do you I need to know? Where do I need to be and what do I need to start doing in the chat room? Again, Ken Coleman says the proximity principle is putting yourself in the proximity of those people, places and practices in the chat room. Tell me what is who are some people you think you need to be in the proximity of? And you can be general. You can say elected officials. You can say if you're a Greek member. Uh, your your sorority or, or fraternity, but in the chat room, just got to go through this. I want this is the last day, so I want this to be very interactive. I want to hear from you. Otherwise, it's just a monologue. So here, who are the people? Where are the places you think you need to be? And what do you what do you need to start doing? So it's in the chat room. Some of the people. <laughs> Brandon says OBO. <laughs> Brandon, <laughs> Brandon has a great answer. OBO, yes, OBO, okay. Any elected officials? And you can say county council, city council, all of the above. It's, you've heard the saying, mom and dad told you, it's not always what you know. Someone knows what I'm about to say. It's about what? It's about what? In your chat room. Not always what you know, but chat one, chat two, chat three. Okay, I'm going to continue. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, who you know. Who you know. <laughs> and how do they know you? Okay? So those are the people, some of the places, and I'll give you my personal experience, courtesy of the City of Columbia, OBO. They sponsored an event about, I think, two years ago. It was at the Optus Bank, two, two and a half years pre-COVID. Okay? Here, networking and teamwork. Some have said teamwork makes the dream work. I agree. You're not in this by yourself. I am a solopreneur. It's just me. I need help with taxes, insurance, legal, et cetera. And I don't know them. I, I, don't, I don't know who these folks. And if I don't know you, I won't interact with you. Be careful with that. Be careful with that. And let's play it safe. Let's play it safe. Okay, I mentioned Next Level and Fast Track. These are 10-week programs sponsored by the city. Where if you're a solopreneur, guess what? You're amongst other 
entrepreneurs, serialpreneurs, all of the above. That's those people, in addition to the OBO, that you're surrounded by. And in most cases, you have some of the same challenges. Okay? Wednesday. Wednesday. Yesterday. Every Wednesday, one million cups. Okay? Ms. Cleckley does an awesome job. It's from 9 a.m. to 9.50. And I would say, just tune in. Don't become a presenter, but just tune in and see other folks pitching their idea or providing uh, uh, movers and shakers, some prospective investors, what their company is doing. The Benedict Women's Business Center, in the chat room, just tell me yes or no. The question is, are you LinkedIn? LinkedIn is the world's, world's, world's largest platform, okay, of business owners, professionals. LinkedIn. It's in the chat. Either you are, I am LinkedIn, yes or no, yay or nay, why, thumbs up. Just let me know. Are you LinkedIn? That's one. Where you can kind of align yourself with folks in a similar capacity. LinkedIn. If you've never heard of LinkedIn, you see my point. Knowledge. Knowledge. Here's the OBO at Optus Bank experience and proximity. Long before I heard about this book, Optus Bank, here's what occurred. I was invited to an event. Thank you, Melissa Lindler. And we well, several of us were there. It was probably almost 150, 200 people. And, and, and please, audience, whenever there's an OBO event, please attend. The food, oh, it, it's on. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, 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 if nothing else, if not, don't eat for three hours. You just, just roll up. Trust me, you'll be good. You'll be good. The Optus Bank, in that proximity, okay, I met Bonita Clemens. She manufactures high viscous tea. She had a display. And I didn't know about the medicinal benefits of that, okay? Another young lady walked up to sample that tea. Her name was Tammy. Uh, her company is Bluebird Property Management. I invest in real estate. That's the proximity principle. I invest in real estate. Tammy, I said, Tammy Davis, yes, pleased to meet you. I said, you know what? I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur. I have a, a few uh, rental homes. Can you assist me with this? She gave me names of contractors that she deals with, Okay. Heating, ventilation, and air conditioning right then and there. That's the proximity principle. That's the people. First, you've attended an event, an, an event, the people who are going to be there. And walking across, because he was a guest speaker at one of my next level classes, was James Chatfield. And I was congratulating him on becoming a board member of the Columbia Housing Authority. And we were just talking. I said, Well, James, I know you're at the South Carolina Community Loan Fund. Um, and do you sponsor, or do you guys have next level? You say, you know what, Paul, we do, but we're looking to kind of subcontract that proximity. I am a subcontractor. So, well, you know what, submit to me a proposal, Paul, and your cost that is structured. Long story short, three years later, I am still, okay, the lead facilitator for the next level South Carolina Community Loan Fund. It works. Not to mention Mayor Benjamin came in, okay? These names, Cheryl was there. Uh, Lacenta Lewis Ellis, I'm dropping names, proximity principle. If you know these folks, just give me a thumbs up. Karen Jenkins was there. These are, again, movers and shakers. Tony Grant was there. Someone knows where I'm going here, okay? And here, Dixon Monk, because I was sponsoring a, a trip. I wanted to take my students to China before the lockdown, before this COVID. And I reached out to the Honorable Paul Livingston, Paul Livingston, County Council. He put me in contact with Dixon Monk, okay? And that's the Columbia uh, International Council. I'm gonna stop for a second. And I'm gonna take you to some places here, let's go. Growing with Greatness, another guest speaker, Gwen Singletary. She has now launched her own podcast. I appeared on it a couple of weeks ago. This is free, free advertisement, ladies and gentlemen. Now, again, you have to reach out to Gwen if you want to give me a text. I can provide you with her information. This podcast is broadcast Mondays, you can see, at 6 p.m., 6 p.m. And it's, here are the following markets. New York, Washington, D.C., metro area, Charlotte, and Columbia, South Carolina. Growing in greatness, where you can literally tell your story, pitch your event that's going on. That's just one. That's just one. 
Okay. Here's another. Uh, Cheryl said on Tuesday, she's not really versed in importing and exporting. I'm listening, Cheryl, but look at this. Here's Dixon Mock. Here, I join. I join. I join. Okay. Ambassador Luis Blaze on the 24th will be at the Palmetto, the Palmetto Club. You don't have to be a member, but again, it's a, it's a cost. It's a cost. It takes money to make money. Yes, I, I agree. $35 for non-members, but here's what's key. And I'm going to read this to you because the font size is relatively small. Please join us for our next Distinguished Speaker Luncheon proximity with Ambassador Blaze to discuss the necessity of maintaining North American supply chains. Okay? North American supply chains especially between South Carolina and here's what's key, the almost 80 Canadian companies based in our state. That's proximity. You're going for the lunch, listen to the presentation. What if one of those companies okay, can assist you with, with, with product development, all of the above? That's the proximity. Okay. And thanks to Cheryl, Cheryl is too modest. Cheryl has a staff and Tangie, Tangie, Michelle Dugar, I'm, I'm throwing names out because again, this is the team, this is the radius, here's the ecosystem. This came out a couple of days ago um, in, from uh, Tangie who is in the Women's Business Center, the launch pad. Now the deadline has passed, okay? Applications closed yesterday, but look, there are still spots left. Being in that proximity, the mailing list, the email mailing list, that's proximity, okay? So when I'm talking about this, I'm giving you clear examples of how this can and has worked, all right? And here's the LEAP program. James, uh, again, James, is uh, he's moved on. He's with uh, a banking concern now, but here, here's LEAP. The current session is already closed. We'll start that shortly, but there'll be two sessions in 2022. The, the pitch I shared with you was the $5,000 pitch. And if you can't see it, I'm going to do this because I've been, let me go to the actual leap here. And this is grant, grant funds. Someone asked the question, is that a loan? No, 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 no. You're, this, these funds are wired to your business checking account, emphasis business. And it's local entrepreneurial accelerator program, okay? And I'll show you time for many the $30,000 pitch that won it for a couple out of, of Sumter. It's statewide. And I'm glad this is being broadcast statewide. So you see what I'm talking about, that proximity principle, the people, the places, and the practices. All right, let's move forward. You've heard thinking outside the box, okay? Critical thinking and problem solving, okay? Entrepreneurs solve problems. They solve problems, okay? I am good at what I do. But what could you uh, implement to become better? There's always room for improvement. My prices are fair. I would submit to you fair prices, provided they are allowing you to keystone. I'll tell you what keystoning is. This too shall pass. This coat shall pass. And it shall pass. Okay? Believe that. Have a positive mental attitude. Now there's a Delta variant. This too will pass. My point is there will always be an opportunity for you to kind of tweak what you have going on, okay? And remember, anyone and everyone is a customer. That is a recipe for failure, all right? And I've heard this before, challenge. I work very hard in my business. I expect you to, but now add smart with that work, all right? Here's some strategies, a SWOT analysis. You know, and, I, and several of you are customers, Lyft and Uber, three years ago, ride sharing. In the midst or in the advent of COVID, Uber has taken off. Huh? Not so much Lyft. Because Uber was able to pivot. In the chat room, you can tell me why they were able to pivot. I'm hearing now that Lyft is now going to the rental car industry. Okay. So again, but Uber eats. Again, because again, that's I'm good at what I do. You can always treat what you going, uh, have going on. You see, uh, I have some uh, images this is Thumbtack, 
and you've heard of Angie's list, it's now Angie. This could be that 25% increase in volume, that COVID related strategy to protect you. Yeah, Mr. Smith, I have to pay Thumbtack a fee. Yes, you're paying them a fee for leads. And Angie, clients of Angie and Thumbtack know that the uh, vendors have been uh, uh, background checked, they're bonded. So that's a, a, a degree of, how should I say, comfortability, all things being equal. Okay? So consider that if you offer a service that can be utilized in the actual Thumbtack. I've seen personal trainers on Thumbtack. Okay, cosmetologists, massage therapists, uh, auto details, all of the above, working with your hands, uh, music instructors. So never say never. Keystoning is a term that we learn that says, keystoning says in essence, in layman's terms, to sell a product or provide a service and price it at twice the amount that it costs you. That's keystone. You see it all the time. Walmart and other companies, you know, they implement what's called everyday low pricing, but that's a marketing scheme, but keystoning. To give a quick example, and you've seen it all the time, if you've traveled pre-COVID to a Disney World or to a sporting event, the price of a bottle of water, the price of the bottle of water is what you're paying. It's not the cost for that merchant. Absolutely not. In your drink machine, it's been marked up. That's keystone. Okay? And how do I determine what my prices are? That's the breakdown. That's the coaching element of it. So again, that learning ecosystem. I mentioned contingency planning. Again, for, not, not uh, if, but when. It will occur. And obviously, anyone and everyone is a customer. Uh, no. In these next level courses, in these uh, fast track, we will nail this down, target your market. And I have a quick example in about 20 seconds I'll need your assistance with in the actual chat room. Some of you I've seen before in my previous classes, so you know where I'm going. All I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, take time to work on, on, not in, on your business, okay? Your enterprise. And that's with the entrepreneurial mindset. Yes, this is what they're paying, but here's what they could pay. There's a reason, ladies and gentlemen, if I need a plumber, today's Thursday, if I need a plumber tomorrow at about 9 p.m., the same cost will be increased. Someone in the chat room tell me why, or an electrician, okay? Just tell me why. And some of you worked in industries that you work shift work. There's something called shift differential, that you're doing the same eight hours, but because of the time, you're, the price of your labor has increased, okay? So again, chat. Don't leave me alone in the chat room. Here's target marketing, not to insult your intelligence, but to drive this home. A particular group of consumers at which a product or service is aimed. That's target marketing. Last night, I uh, spoke with a group in the Greenville Spartanburg area, and we just did this as a quick example. Okay, I, it was a tent. Here, here's a quick example. And I'm not going to ask for the chat in the essence of time, because I want to show you, uh, let you listen to an actual elevator pitch, uh, courtesy of the Gambles, Nicole and Milton Gamble, who won the $30,000. As you can see, the female who, who, females wear shoes, they wear heels, but there's something about these heels, upper right, upper left-hand corner, that's a certain target demographic. And ladies, if you can, just weigh in in the chat room, okay? It's something about the heel, something about the heel. As you can see, check, cash, payday cash advances. That's a, again, someone said low income people, the unbanked, guess what? That's a target market. Unbanked, low income, that's a target market. Okay, I see the chat room. Okay, great. And then you see five guys. I said last evening, what's the likelihood of me being successful going to five guys with $5? Not very successful. But what if I took that same amount to go to cookout? You see my point? So when you target their certain clients, in some cases, they'll pay two or three times more because they're not banked. I don't agree with it. Remember, I don't agree with it, but it's a legal business in South Carolina. Georgia and North Carolina have banned the practice, but it's legal. If it's legal, again, okay, we abide by the laws. And here in lower right-hand corner, I'm from North Charleston. I've seen many. <laughs> many of folks, <laughs> I, I'm not going to speak specifics, that have consumed 
well, what they call alcohol. It's malt liquor, really, a 40. But just tell me, who do you think? The question is, in the, in the chat, I see the chat room is uh, uh, lighting up. Who or what demographic group is being targeted? Okay, so we see the shoes. We see the five guys versus cookout. Still food. We have to eat. But then again, the unbanked, the unbanked, okay? I.S. Levy Johnson, and uh, he's a very successful entrepreneur and attorney and former state representative says, he said, ignorance is expensive. Ignorance is expensive. And another quote, he said, you don't borrow money. Again, I love these tidbits. You don't borrow money. But I've got a loan. He said, in essence, what happens when you borrow money, you are being sold money. And the price you pay is interest. That's real world. That's proximity. I use that quote every semester. You're being sold money at a cash advance. I'm going to sell it to you. And the price you're going to pay is interest. Okay. While we are 33 in the chat. Okay. Okay. Okay, city. The 40 ounce, I'm going to say. <laughs> The, uh, the malt liquor, um, it's a product. It's sold in local <laughs> uh, establishments. Anyone who's 21 can, anyone can, technically speaking, consume malt liquor, can. But they target a certain gender, males. Let's drill down, not just any male, Latino and Black males. That's who's being targeted. Don't hate the players, hate the game, okay? We're going to continue with this. We're good, we're good, we're good. Okay, all right. Professionalism and social media. I've heard many folks say, I have over 500 Facebook friends. I'm blowing up Instagram. I, 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 I. Okay. They say they have a website. Okay, they have a website. I sell my products on eBay, Pinterest, etc. And sometimes I have too much inventory. Okay. What I want to say, strategy, since you have all these so-called, again, if you want to separate friends from, from true supporters, invite them to your crowdfunding campaign. Just invite them. I'm trying to raise $5,000. The math says if you're trying to raise $5,000 and you have over 500 Facebook friends, all each of them have to do is contribute $10. You want, you want to keep it real? You want to keep it real? Yeah, you want to really, if you're blowing up, you all that in a bag of chips. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, what's it say? Money talks. I'm going to leave the rest alone. But here we go. So let's do the crowdfunding campaign. I have a website, okay? Have you checked into search engine optimization? Whenever they type in your name, Jays, or when I type in L-E, leave these pulls up. Leave these for home. That's search engine optimization. OK, and because folks, American consumers are very impatient. So check your, your company, check your company. And once you are on your website, the average consumer will give you three clicks to find what they're looking for. Three, three, maybe sometimes two. If it's not there, bye. OK, as certain some folks read the reviews and um, that can be a positive or negative. You can have a competitor trying to. Uh, you know, disparage your company. So be monitor, monitor it. And folks will spend more. Listen to this. If you offer free shipping. But it's going to cost me. Well, build that cost into the price of the merchandise. That strategy. Okay? That strategy. Free shipping on all your website. So then now you, you've kind of, when you do free shipping, you've kind of taken the, uh, uh, you know, that, that critical analysis of your product. It's free shipping. Amazon Prime, Jeff Bezos went to space. He was quoted as saying, thank you for all of your, you Amazon customers. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Here, I'm going to go to the. Uh, Lawrence? Hello, is this Lawrence? Yes, Lawrence. Yes, Lawrence. Okay. I'm going to go here. Um, just give me a second. Out of respect for this group, again, Melissa's uh, Lindler. Um, I'm going to go to the city of Columbia's, their actual.
Вот если вот. Their Instagram page, because I'm wrapping up here. Where is it? Here it is right here. Again, this all day, every day. I'm just scrolling down the ecosystem. Okay. Next week, you have no money. Stephen Hughes, they're always on top of this, always. And Cheryl Sally, she's too modest. The actual uh, Women's Business Center wants you, and, and I think that process will occur in the future. I think it was around February, Cheryl, is that if you had a client consultation, you'd already reached out to the, uh, the professionals there, that they would allow you to have a pop-up shop. If you sold merchandise or products or uh, advertised your services, they granted you space there on their facility once you've already gone through the intake process. Want to cover that, okay? Just want to cover that. And here it is. Before we end, looks like we go here. Here's the pitch. I'm gonna let's go so you can hear. I want to make sure you can hear it. Uh. We are Nicole and Milton Gamble of Visa Now LLC. There are currently hundreds of thousands of people seeking assistance with immigrant document processing. Uh, these families um, have been struggling for a long time uh, until Visa Now came along. It was uncertain because of the high cost. We're committed to the process by helping to remove the problem of uncertainty, eliminate that fear, and instill trust at an affordable rate. The search for the immigration uh, assistance is vast through Google, Bing, and uh, Yahoo. And it's not just in Sumter, it's nationwide. We can offer our services remotely to almost any state in the US. Sumter has a close knit community of immigrants with 65% of non-citizens coming from Latin America. There's a device mix of legal permanent residents, international students, temporary workers. 63% of the naturalized citizens were from Asia and all of these diverse groups require our services at some point. Sumter takes pride in the growth and the prosperity with the help of the immigrant community. South Carolina's population includes 5% immigrants who have contributed to over 379 million in state and local taxes, while immigrant workers can be found in vitally any industry, such as farming, fishing, construction. Our story is truly a humble beginning. Nicole <laughs> left an abusive marriage and came to the U.S. penniless, but with her children and dreams of a better way, she found a better life. She's now a naturalized U.S. citizen. Hey. After preparing mounds of paperwork, interview after interview, we had an epiphany. And we said, Ooh, hmm, what if we offered a service that encompassed the entire process at one location at an affordable rate? We realized there was a demand for our services. And voila, Visa Now LLC was born. A solution to the problems faced by the immigrants and their families who wish to start the immigration journey is a one-stop shop where they can have their documents prepared at an affordable rate and even benefit from our post green card service, which offers solutions for life after gaining legal services. We've identified three target groups, the family, military service people, and the eligible DACA recipient, which means deferred action for childhood arrivals. Ethnicity, all of that does not matter. Education, uh, occupation has no status. They can be male, female, but the sponsor must reside in the U.S. Now, here are the things that we want to do. We want to, just a few of them. We want to hire a full-time bilingual employee, improve the website, of course. Um, we've already reached out to Chamber of Commerce and state and local officials. And, of course, we're going to try to... Uh, get our software, preferably some AI software to help improve our, our, our site. Um, 
Uh, prices have been set according to the industry. And I got to tell you, um, even though our prices are set at 175, they're at least 20 to 30 percent lower than the industry standards. And um, our costs are about 75 a month, which gives us a pretty good profit. Um, our main three competitors, Boundless, Rapid Visa, and Immigration Direct. Um, our advantage is we offer competitive prices, we review services, a variety of forms, package assembling and submission services. And most importantly, we went through it. So it's a personal touch that we add. Clients get it all right here. Now meet the team, you know us, but there's Brandon, college student. He's going to be a doctor, by the way. Uh, there's Haiti. She's um, our uh, translator. She does um, Spanish as well as Portuguese and German. Um, she's a nurse. And there's Gabby, uh, a scholar uh, from a long time. She's been uh, doing a lot of uh, things. She's a, a newly inducted, what was it, National... National Honor, National Honor Society High School Scholar. Um, they all come and they work with us and they put in 100%. Here are the funds that we're going to need. Uh, we're seeking $30,000 in capital investment to take Visa now to the next level. Uh, for operations and cash reserves, 30% will go. Marketing, advertising, 24%. New hire, 16%. Well, okay. and I'm not going to go through the Q&A. If you want to listen to the whole Q&A, well, I'll just text them. I'll give you the link to the whole three hours of the pitch night. They, this was 30%, ladies and gentlemen. The 70% was the, was the business plan. Okay, this is only the pitch. The pitch didn't win it for them. It's both and. That was $30,000. And I want to cover one more, and I'll take your questions here. I'm just going to do this. Live plan. Live plan, and I neglected, they have a one-page business plan, ladies and gentlemen, one-pager. Here it is. Here's an example of, here's an example of a one-page business plan. Now, I'm not saying this is what you need for a bank or to, uh, to present to one million cups, but here's sim simplified. One page. One page. Okay. Now, what about this? Again, score is always free, score.org, but here, uh, one thing I like about it, you got $15 a month or $30 a month, but uh, here, risk-free for 60 days. So again, not a 20% refund, 100% refund if you're not satisfied. So the tools are there, again, skills to pay the bills, uh, it's right. To, yeah, uh, it's 1058. I'm going to stop here and now and turn things back in the hands of Aisha. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul. This, this is wonderful. As always, we really enjoyed it. If anyone has any questions, Queen asked that you put them in the chat or if you'd like to ask those questions, you can unmute yourself and we'll take a few minutes to answer any questions that you may have. Um, Paul, I love that idea of the proximity principle. That's I'm going to use that people, places, practices. That that's a jewel of information. That's wonderful. So, do we have any questions before we wrap it on up? Okay. Well, Paul, do you have any um, final thoughts? Uh, no, I want to say again, uh, thank you, Aisha, uh, Melissa Lindler, the City of Columbia, the OBO, all of you, you know how I feel about uh, with the opportunities you provide. No one has an excuse in the Midlands or throughout uh, that you can't point your finger at the OBO. No, they are on it, high, uh, very professional. I would like uh, Cheryl, the dean, uh, the modest one, to uh, show. Could you just elaborate on that pop-up that you had about several months ago, pre-COVID, uh, for the for the audience and your group, I can't say enough about the Women's Business Center. <laughs> yes, thank you, Paul. Thank you, and thank you so much for all of this wealth of information and knowledge that you've shared uh, within these three sessions. It's been really, 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 really great. You are awesome. Thank you to the City of Columbia. Yeah, for Women's History Month, right? We did it mid uh, March through mid April. Um, Benedict is or has converted its bookstore 
into what we're working on now as a retail marketplace for you know, uh, women or individuals who are selling products. So what we did was allow women-owned businesses to pop up their businesses there for the month in observance of Women's History Month. Now we're moving, transitioning to actually having at least five spaces, I think it is, uh, like a kiosk. So this will serve sort of like a launch pad. If you want to get into airport concessions, you have to have experience as a kiosk slash storefront. So we started with the pop-ups to pop up their products. And now we're moving into some permanent spaces, kiosk spaces for uh, our women retail entrepreneurs. Okay. So that's Thank what the pop-up was. Yeah. But we're looking, we're planning to do some more things and, um, <laughs> Paul, you put you put me out there, but we also provide, and I didn't say this, but we um, Next Improved is one of our partners, and they're a larger law firm here in South Carolina, and they provide pro bono legal services to the Benedict Women's um, Women's Business Center clients. So that if the clients are ready, you know, really ready to do, they're they're already up for the most part, or they really need some legal counsel. Or looking at contracts, looking at lease agreements, uh, intellectual property, all about trademarking and all that we provide, they provide that for us at no cost. And we're going to be sponsoring some CPA services, bookkeeping and accounting services as well for our women entrepreneurs. So we're trying to, you know, get some things in place to really help. And I don't, I'm, 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 I'm going to share a little bit of this. We're going to, we're in the process and we'll launch probably January, 2022, our WBC mobile unit traveling across the state to provide. Wow. So we want to make sure we reach uh, our rural communities. Okay. Thank you, Cheryl. Okay. She, <laughs> she, she, Cheryl is always modest, but again, again, she's, she's a dean. She's a dean. And one other comment I wanted to make about the red bottom shoes, uh, and it was very interesting to me, uh, you know, they're very uh, uh, sought after in high demand. A real estate professional who shall remain unnamed says her target customers buy houses from the 500,000 up to $3 million range. So when she's showing them those houses or meeting them, she wears the red bottom shoes. That's that's proximity. So again, I'm just saying. So some folks say, "Well, that's over the top," but depend on her industry, they come to expect that. Am I am I right, ladies? Okay, I guess I'm done. <laughs> I, I'm done. I'm gonna shut up. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and I have the website for Next Improve It. Wow, look at this. The ten mile radius. The Women's Business Center on Reed Street again. Laurel Street, Main Street, City of Columbia has it going on. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to add to that, Cheryl, as we wrap up? Well, no, um, um, we've kind of said it all, but, you know, I just encourage and um, encourage our, our entrepreneurs just to take advantage. Like Paul's been saying, take advantage, take advantage, take ownership, invest time in your business to set it up right. Um, Paul has given so many great, great gold nuggets here. Take them, take ownership, learn more. Don't be afraid to reach out and learn what you need to know so you can, you know, establish this solid foundation. We're here to help Small Business Administration, City of Columbia, all the different resources in the area. We're here to help. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, Angela, do you want to um, add anything as we wrap up? I don't have anything to add, but my coworker, Valerie Torsteson, <clears throat> please forgive me, is um, on. Valerie, do you have anything to add to what I put out in the beginning? <clears throat> Beyond sharing with you the same thing that Paul has, the same thing that uh, Cheryl has, my colleague um, Angela and Aisha have, I don't. We just want to see you succeed. So we are hoping that you will use our time, talents, treasures, and resources because ours are yours. Thank you. Thank you, Valerie. We appreciate that. And thank you, Kalina, so much for um, monitoring the chat for us and keeping up with all the questions. We really appreciate that. Um, 
Today, this afternoon, you will receive an email from our office with a copy of this recording, a survey. Uh, one of the questions in the survey will be if you have any interest in a one-on-one -on -one consult to discuss the financial fitness. So please answer that question and let us know and we can contact you to schedule some one-on-one. -on -one. Um, as Cheryl has said, we have a lot of free resources. So we, it's really important that you take advantage of the resources and before you think about paying someone, contact us and we may be able to provide that service for you free of charge. Um, again, if you are interested in our webinar next Tuesday with um, Stephen Hughes with no money to discuss um, profitability, please um, register for that. I'll include that registration in the email as well. And if we don't have any final questions, um, thank you all for joining us today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and please contact our office if you have any questions or need any additional assistance. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you.